There's our first couple of people in. Hey, Chloe. Hey, Lindsay. Hey, Katie. Hey, Jessica. Hello. We have people. Woo. It's always the fear, isn't it? You have one of these things, you turn it and, and not a single person appears. Totally. <laughs> We're waiting for people. Uh... <laughs> so let's just talk amongst ourselves, just all four of us. That's, it. <laughs> that's your fear. That's not our fear. <laughs> that's my fear, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just kind of put that outward way, isn't it? Hey Raymond, hey Shona, hey Alice. Welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us on a, a rainy evening. Someone bring the sun back. It was bearable when the sun was here. Hi Alison. For those who've just joined, we'll wait a few minutes, as usual, and see who pops in. We can all look at Rachel's lovely uh, curtain in the background. So colourful. It's very colourful. It's a beautiful curtain. I'm actually going to whip up a new curtain for next week. I think we've all seen enough of this curtain. <laughs> <laughs> I certainly have. That could be your thing. It could be my thing. It could be your thing. Whipping curtain up a girl. curtain. Curtain girl. <laughs> dot com. <laughs> that's a, that's, that's a, no. <laughs> it's not raining in Leith. Right, we're all coming to oh, Edinburgh. Thanks, Jessica, just for telling us that. Cheers. That's cheered us all up. <laughs> it's raining in Glasgow. Wait a few more minutes. This always this always feels a little more tense than it needs to oh, feel. It? This just yeah. kind of silence of uh -huh. it's like standing in a lift and you're not allowed to sort of <laughs> talk to people and then wait wait until the lift doors open and then you go yeah. you go out. Oh yeah, right, thanks. Yeah, nice to <laughs> you. Yep. I don't know, at least there's like some music. We should, we should actually have a playlist. I was thinking about that the other day. We need a playlist. Right. Who, who's in charge of that then? I'll be in charge of that. No, I mean, not that I don't think that your choices. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> I'm going to write that down as a task that will cheer me up today. Webinar playlist. You said you had, had a tough day. That means you're going to like choose sad songs for next week. <laughs> <laughs> Don't choose them today. Wait till tomorrow. <laughs> or angry songs. <laughs> yeah. Or you go and drink a bottle of wine and <laughs> pick, <laughs> pick drunk songs. Yeah, this could be a bad move. Better James Blunt. <laughs> oh. Cool. Well, why don't we just get started? That's about three, four minutes past. Magic. Well, thank you so much for joining us, everybody. My name, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Rachel Brown, and I'm part of the Creative Entrepreneurs Club, which is a, a network that is driven and supported by the creative community within Scotland and beyond. So today's session is going to be brilliant. We've got Gerard from The Blank Faces joining us, and we, Andrew will introduce him and give you a bit of background in a minute. But just before we crack on, we will finish bang on six o'clock. Lots of people are doing these kinds of chats um, all over the place at the moment. And we know that you're juggling so much and we really appreciate you giving us your time. So we will finish at six o'clock. This session is also being recorded. Um, so if you want to ask a question after the event, please just drop us a note and we will get that over to you. But if you want to ask a question in the event, remember there's a little panel at the bottom that says chat and there's also a panel that says q &A. And we've got the glorious Keenan with us who will be fielding those questions and managing all of that throughout the session if we need to. This is an informal chat as always, but we hope it will be full of good laughs and inspiration and lots of knowledge. This is the fourth one we've done. Um, and as we keep saying, we'll be here until you need us. 
um, and want us. Um, so without further ado, somebody who needs us and wants us, I'm going to hand you over to Andrew Dobby. Cool. Thanks, Rachel. Hi, everyone. Hope you're doing okay. Uh, I was just saying it's a, it's a slightly rainy or dry uh, evening here in Glasgow, but I hear it's not over in Edinburgh. Lucky, lucky gets. Um, so thanks for joining us. Uh, my name's Andrew. I'm the founder of Made Brave, which is a creative brand agency and also Campfire, a content agency over in Edinburgh. So they'll be having the better weather than us at the moment. Um, you know, a few weeks ago, Rachel and I came together. Um, Made Brave have been working with Rachel and the team at Creative Entrepreneurs Club. Um, to, I suppose, bring as much support we can to the creative industries right now. Um, we've we've um, created a group on LinkedIn, Creative Industry COVID Support Group. If you've not joined that, there's over 3,200 people now on that group, and they're offering help, support, um, and just a bit of chat, I suppose, to each other. Um, everyone is also signposting for loans and grants as well. Uh, Rachel and the team at Creative Entrepreneurs Club have also gifted the platform to the creative industry. So um, if you want to jump to creativeentrepreneursclub.co.uk, um, if you sign up there, it's completely free. There's about a thousand people joined up over there now um, from over 40 different cities and there's loads of great stuff over there. There's a whole section on one-to-one -one support. So if you'd like to chat to me, Keenan or Rachel, plus a whole host of other lovely people, um, we'll do our best to try and help you with any way we can, whether that's just a little bit of advice, uh, a listening ear, um, or to point you in the direction of someone um, who can help you better than ourselves. Um, it's really, really easy to do. Just jump on there. You can um, view who's got time available and you can book that time and that is it so very very easy so we've been um, as Rachel mentioned we've had these these webinars this is the fourth in the series uh, last week we had Sandy Thompson um, on the show Sandy is a filmmaker writer and theatre director um, and we spent some time with Sandy talking about uh, focusing on the power of creativity, nurturing talent, and as I suppose some um, coping mechanisms and, and advice for just now as well. Um, previous to that, we had John Latham, who's a qualified coach, mentor, and consultant, um, who gave some practical advice um, on kind of looking after our mental well-being and self-care, which is obviously very important for us all right now. And in our first session, we also had Mark Logan, who's the uh, former COO of Skyscanner, uh, and Mark gave us some tips on sort of being resilient in a time like now. Um, if you want to check any of these out, um, they're all pre they're all recorded, and we do them all live, obviously, as you're here live. Um, but um, you can check them out on the cultural. Um, sorry, I say that every time on the Creative Entrepreneurs Club website, um, or or if you just jump back on LinkedIn on any of our pages, you'll be able to find us there. Um, so, um, so yeah, you know, obviously just now, you know, a lot of us um, businesses are, you know, businesses have had to change overnight. We've had to, you know, relook at things and uh, markets have com closed completely. And a lot of businesses are pivoting or adapting, as I like to think, uh, in this current climate. So today we've got um, Gerard mackenzie Govan, um, who... Rachel's got the actual formal introduction, I, I believe, just after me. Um, so Gerard's hopefully going to share some of his thoughts about, you know, what he's been up to, how it's affecting his his business at the moment, and hopefully between the four of us, we can we can um, share some valuable tips and thoughts today. Thanks a lot. So for those of you who are just joining us, um, this is week four. We're obviously getting into the swing of it and starting to lose it all at the same time. So I don't know about all of you guys, but this week, only it's only Tuesday. Um, this is a tough one for me so far. It's been a hard week. So apologies. I do have the introduction for Gerard. So Gerard um, is the founder and CEO of The Blank Faces, a fashion brand that aims to end homelessness in Glasgow and actually beyond. Um, we're going to have a Q&A with Gerard, we're going to listen to his story, we're going to ask him some questions. But essentially, The Blank Faces is a Glasgow-based streetwear brand and it takes inspiration from the stories and personal experiences of those living on the streets to create designs for the streetwear collections. At the heart of the company's ethos is the commitment to share profit from the sale of every garment um, with the people who inspire each creation. And if you haven't checked any of uh, the stuff out, it's beautiful stuff, it's really wearable, it's brilliant. Um, and I think given the fact that Gerard is one of many incredible social enterprises that Scotland has, it's worth looking at how we start to think differently about business and think differently about support. Um, and that's really why we wanted them on the show. So Andrew's going to kick us off with the first right. question. Andrew, over to you. Great, Gerard. So it'd be really great to hear, just I suppose in your own words, a little bit about who you are and what you do. Yeah, so um, my name is Gerard. Hi. Um, so for me, it's um, I, I run the Blank Faces. So we're the UK's first 
fashion branding that um, ended homelessness. So uh, for for us, we look at homelessness, and I've looked at homelessness for years and years and years, and you've got all these other social enterprises or charities throwing money at homelessness and saying that they're trying to fix it. And I don't know what it's like anywhere else, but I know in Glasgow especially, it's getting worse and worse and worse. And, and for us, uh, we wanted to do something a bit differently. So we kind of took what we do and for us, it's about not making money and throwing money at homelessness because it doesn't seem to be working. It's about trying to change people's perceptions about homelessness. So instead of you thinking about another statistic or another tagline sitting there in the street or, or anywhere else, it's more about that's a human being there and seeing actual human beings sitting there. So all of the designs we do are created or inspired by someone that's homeless and it kind of tells their story and um, their trials or tribulations and how they've got to that point in their life. Can I, can I ask a question, Gerard? How did yeah, you start? What was the idea for the business? Where did it come from? So when I was, God, I, I, this is a long story probably, but I was born in Ayr. Um, my mum and dad uh, lived in Africa and they just moved back to, to Ayr and they started, they rented a little hotel down in Ayr where um, my mum was a, a wee Catholic woman who, you know, she cared about everyone. She would do everything for everyone. And she wanted to just, take in homeless people and help homeless people. So we weren't like a rich family or anything. So we lived in one of the rooms in the hotel. There was never a them and us. It was always just, you know, my mum and dad maybe go out for a night out and someone in the hotel would look after us or it would just be like a big kind of crazy family. So um, so it was always that, you know, my mum would be up in the morning making breakfast for people. She would cook people dinner. She would, she would help people as much as she could. And it was always something for me that um, it kind of rubbed off on me. Um, and what about four years ago? Yeah, well, be five years ago soon. I had a little boy, and um, just changed my life. Like you, you just start seeing things differently. Just started to notice homelessness a lot more for me, and I was like, God, right, okay. Um, and I wanted to kind of to try and help people. So just at the same time as having my little boy, um, my mum passed away as well. So it was just it was a bit of a right. Well, I want to want to try and kind of help people as much as I can. So I worked in retail for years and years and years, and uh, I kind of wanted to give up retail because I had a little boy, I wanted to spend more time with him. Um, and I took a job in, a, in an office as a, a manager for a, a telecommunications company. Um, bad idea. And, um, and it just, it, it bored the absolute life out of me. So I wanted to try and do something. So I started doing little classes down at a, a shelter down um, near the bar is the Lodge and House Mission. Um, it was just one day a week. Um, I found a loophole at work that I could actually take a, a day a month off to go and kind of work somewhere else. So I, I wanted to do that. Um, and I just started doing one day a month in this little shelter, just going and talking to people, getting to know them, um, and kind of breaking down those barriers. And from there, um, what, two, about two years ago, I applied for a little grant, got a little grant and registered as a community interest company where, um, you know, we were a non-profit, wanted to give money back to helping homeless people. Um, and from uh, and from there, it was just, we applied, or we didn't apply, we asked um, the city council if they could help us in any way possible and they kind of come back and says, no, nah, there's not that much of a problem. We've got it sorted here. Um, yeah. And so we we did the, we did the, the poster of the People Make Mistakes, um, which was the, the take on People Make Glasgow. Um, we got into quite a bit of trouble for it. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. So uh, we then, with the money we had left, we made 100 T-shirts of it and we sold them. And from there, we've kind of grown to where we are now. So... Yeah, we could have kept plugging along with all the t-shirts and, and, and sweatshirts that we did, but we, we've kind of, over the past year, I kind of I started doing this full time the 13th of April last year. Uh, and from there, it's kind of started going leaps and bounds and it's kind of mm. got a little bit mental. But um, yeah, it's, you know, we're seeing my classes growing. We now run classes in three different places across Glasgow. We're doing Edinburgh now as well. And it's just, um, you know, we're starting to see more and more people getting involved. And I think it's, um, yeah, that's what I want to do. I want, I want people to just start changing their perceptions of homeless people. And the more that happens, the more we're breaking down barriers and the more that people see the actual human beings sitting there. 
Yeah, so, so Gerard, I suppose at the moment, you know, well, you know, at any time, right, being homeless is obviously hugely challenging in itself yeah. for anyone. And we all wish that, you know, that we don't end up in that situation. But obviously, you know, unfortunately, lots of people do. Um, but I mean, just now, obviously, with, you know, food banks are stretched, with people yeah. not actually being on the streets to give people money, which yeah. is, you know, I'd imagine how a lot of people often survive as well. Yeah. Um, it's extremely challenging just now. And I'm just wondering, you know, could you share with us a little bit of an insight on, on what that world looks like? Um, <laughs> Just now, I think, or? I think for us at the moment it, it's kind of hard because the, the places that we run our classes from are all you know we're not allowed to run classes. It, it's all um, it, everything's kind of been pulled back for us. And I was talking to one of the one of the women that run one of them in, in town the other day, and I was saying to her, "Oh, it's good that you know a lot of these hotels are opening up and people are staying in hotels and stuff." And she was like, "There's more people homeless in the streets now than there was mm. six eight weeks ago. It's all you know a lot of the stuff in the papers and the, the, the TV. It's all just kind of." Good news stories, but there's there's so many more people because you've obviously got an uplift in you know spousal abuse, you've got an uplift in all these kind of things at the moment. So it's it's um it's 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 a bit of a tough one, and I think for us the only way that we thought that we could help is I mean one of the things that we do is uh, for every design or or every product sold, we give a percentage directly to the homeless person that's come up with the design because it's going to be giving them something back as well as well as giving back to the wider. Mm-hmm. You know, fat, uh, homeless community. It's about giving that person a bit of, you know, ownership and a bit of, you know, kudos to the, them actually doing something. Um, so as well as that, what we are trying to do now is we're working with the Marie Trust, um, and we're donating twenty five percent of all of our sales at the moment directly to the food banks in Glasgow to try and help them because, um, yeah, the food banks are really struggling. It just seems everybody's really struggling. I mean, we're probably all really struggling as well, but. Um, it's it's more about kind of to, to helping these people, and I think that you know a lot of people are saying you know furlough just now, and but these people can't go and furlough. You know these people don't have a house, or you know they're still sleeping in the streets and stuff. So I think that um, it's it's it, it's going to be it's going to be a different world when we come out of it. But I think that we need to be ready to just have everything to go because we want these people to we still want to be engaged with everybody that we work with. So that when we come out of the back of this, then people are still there's still something there that they remember that we're doing it each week. So um, yeah, I think I think it's just it's just trying to keep some kind of normality at the moment with the people yeah. that we work with. Yeah. Can I can I ask Gerard one of the things that for those of you who are not from Glasgow, you might you may or may not have seen it. So there's a big huge. It's, it's magenta, isn't it? Bright pink, but it, I think it's magenta. And it says, people make Glasgow. Yeah. And um, what Gerard and the guys at the Blank Faces did was they took the, exactly the same lo- logo and instead of having people make Glasgow, had people make mistakes. Um, and that brand, um, particular brand push that you did, that went, that went viral, that went like everybody, it felt like everybody saw it and everybody was aware of it. And I certainly, I met a lot of people who um, work with you and clients who felt actually a sense of pride that there was something that, that was going out like that. Yeah. So you, and so do you tell us, because one of the things that you do brilliantly is that, as you say, you see the people behind the situation. Yeah. Um, and lots of people buy your stuff. Lots of people... Um, from a whole range of different backgrounds by your stuff and the yeah. people who are homelessness who experience who are homelessness experienced yeah. by your stuff tell us a bit more about that because that's a brilliant story you're, you're playing yourself down here Jared. you made a I smart so. choice not, yeah, yeah you did you know it's um, true no I think I think for us it's, it's you know it's taking uh, that story not not everybody we work with is an artist but we have to work with you know, you know, we talk to people and, and, and people's stories are the most powerful things in the world. And I think for us, like, you know, there's times when I go in and I sit and I talk to people and you hear their story and the, the stuff that they've been through. And I, like I said, I've got a little boy who I can hear in the hallway here. Um, and like for me, um, you know, you hear some of these guys' stories or women's stories when they were young and, and what they've been through and it's harrowing. And for us, it's about turning that story into something that looks good and wearable, but still has that story behind it. Because we want, as a brand, we want people to buy us because the product looks good and you know it feels good, etc. But we also want to have those stories there. So, you know, it's yeah, it's probably something that isn't done as much that you know that a lot of fashion brands don't really have stories behind what they do. But 
for us, it's about the stories. It's about telling these stories, but doing it in a completely different way that, you know, isn't kind of like a little violin playing because a lot of people get bored of that kind of thing. But it's about something that people, you know, they believe in the brand, they believe in, you know, buying into the brand because of either it looks good, there's a story behind it, or they're actually helping people as well. So, um, yeah, so, so I mean, for us, it's, it's about... It can, it can come from anything. Like we've had a boy, Davy, who is one of the um, one of the homeless guys, one of the first guys I ever met, um, and he was a it was a methadone addict, and, and you know we spoke about things for we spoke for weeks and weeks, and only one of the little things that came out, and it's our bestseller, was a he was talking about you know homeless people are seen as a bleeding heart. He was like you know we've always got our hand out asking for money. He's like just why be treated like a human being, man? He's like. You know, I don't want to be, um, you know, I don't, I don't want to be begging, but I've got nothing else in life. And out of that whole thing, we come up with this bleeding heart and, you know, we traced that a heart out from the computer and, and, and we did loads of different things. Um, and from there, you know, we, we did the bleeding heart. And for him, there's a, there's a, um, a blogger, I think that's what he's called, uh, who, who bought the t-shirt and wore it and he got like so many thousand likes. And when I showed Davy that, you know, that was, he was so proud of it. It was amazing. It's great to see the pride in his face. And I think for us, it's, it's that, that's one of the big things is about seeing, you know, see, see the pride in people and, and the design as well, as, um, as well as, as obviously trying to make money and help that way. Yeah, and I think that I think it's nice that you've struck that balance of terms of you know as human beings we need purpose. It's, you know, yeah. we're, we're hugely purpose-driven creatures, and you know, you, obviously you need money to feed yourself and to house yourself. But you know, it's the balance of both things, isn't it? Um, yeah. And and you know, and I love the fact that you know it's unearthing these stories because I think, you know. Um, you, you know, you, by doing that, you're giving that person a sense of purpose. You're you're, you're educating people. Um, and you know, as you say, the, the products have to look good as well, right? Because you know, you need yeah. the balance of, of everything. I'm interested to know, you know, you spoke about Davy there and and the, the creative process with him that you were in talks for a week. Is the process the same every time? Are you, you know, do you have a set process? Do they, do they work co beside designers, or is it, is it is it completely different every time? So it's it's a lot more structured now than what it was when we first started. When we first started, it was more about just going in and getting to know people, etc. But uh, we've kind of moved on a lot from there. So now we kind of run a kind of six month structure where at first it's it's probably pretty boring for people, but it's going in and it's people just writing down their timeline. So from where they were born up to now, uh, and from there what we'll do is we'll, we'll work kind of one-on-one -on -one with them or as little groups and we'll, we'll try and kind of pull out different parts of those stories. Um, mm -hmm. but, I mean, for us, we've got a boy buddy who, um, who works with us and Buddy's amazing. So for Buddy, he's got about maybe four or five designs coming out. Um, and it's just because he's there every single week and he's, you know, and he wants to, he wants to tell his story. He wants to, mm -hmm. um, and, and when, we are, when we are coming up with different ideas, he's then going, oh, well, we could do this, that, or you could do this. And I mean, some of his, um, some of his artwork, you know, it's not, you know, it's not Monet, but when you look at the, 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 the actual stories behind the stuff he does, it's amazing. And from where we've taken, I'm not going to say where we've taken him because, uh, you know, he, he's, his own, he's his own man and he's got to where he has. But, you know, when I first met him, he was sleeping in a shelter on a floor and now he's got a flat, he's got a little job, um, you know, and he sees his kids more regularly as well. And I think for us, that's, that's one of the proudest things that we've done. Mm. Um, you know, and do, you, do, you, do you collaborate with um, designers or is it, is it always like designers in your team or do you pull in, you know, name designers or designers from agencies and such like? So for us, it's, it's pretty much about our team. I've got um, our creative director for the company, Piot. He's an unbelievable designer. So mm -hmm. um, he's he's great. He The way it kind of worked is we did our, our sweatshirts and we did our, our T-shirts and stuff, but... You know these brands kind of get get lost a lot of the kind of you know t-shirts and sweatshirt brands that will just get lost because there, there, there's a lot of them out there so for us i always wanted to be a fashion brand I always wanted to have full collections out there telling stories and um and we started working with caledonian university last year uh, where we took their students um i think it was 20 there was 20 of them 19 girls and one guy and uh, we took them all down to the, the mission, which is down at the Barras, and um, just took them in and said to them, you know, want you to go in and kind of get to know people, have a chat with them, and you've never saw as many shocked and uh, 
scared looking people in all your life. Um, we took them in and, and just kind of left them there. And me and the lecturer kind of left and we, we were working in an office next door to it. And uh, we come back a couple hours later and all the, all the students were sitting talking to different individuals. And that's probably for me is, you know, one of the proudest moments because it's, it was breaking down the barriers. These people, these, these young kids were then seeing um, people as people instead of, you know, mm. and, and, and when we talked to them after and we kind of had a debrief, they were like, yeah, these, these are just normal human beings. And we're like, yeah, they are just normal human beings. And yeah. they were like, God, you know, I was scared of doing this and doing that. And for us, it's, um, that was brilliant. And from there, what we did is we worked with, um, with, with the students through, through the semester and they come up with a, with a garment, so jackets or whatever. Uh, and at the end of that, we, would, we did a fashion show down in Merchant City and we picked a winner. Well, we actually picked four winners. And what we then do is we manufacture their, um, manufacture their garment. And one of the big things for us, and, and probably another part of the business, is that um, it, there's so many talented fashion people in Scotland that just run away to London as soon as they can because that's where everything is. It's all down in London. And up here, there was so there used to be so many great little brands up here, but they seem to have disappeared. Um, mm -hmm. And there's so many, you know, they've all went down to London now or they're all in other places. And I, I want to bring something back to Glasgow that's, that's cool and, 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 you know, that people can actually have a bit of pride that it's, you know, not that we've got the salt tire all over it or whatever, but just that, you know, we've, we've got something back in Glasgow. So working with the students, you know, we, we give them a percentage of uh, each garment sold as well. So it's getting their name out there and it's also giving them a little bit of money for them as well. Um, so we did it with Caledonian, it went really well. And we mm -hmm. just finished it with Gala Shields. That finished a couple of months ago. So we've got tons of outfits from there. Um, their work was amazing. We've just done it with Caledonian again. So it was just about supposed to finish, but um, COVID being COVID has kind of cancelled a lot of it down. So we're just going to have to kind of pick up where we picked or uh, where we, where we kind of left off once everything gets lifted. Um, and I think that's, that's kind of one of the kind of models we want to work with is we want to work with students. Um, mm -hmm. what, what you find is in, in, in fashion as well is that a lot of big brands, uh, you know, they'll, they'll let you go down and work for them for six months, eight months, a year for free. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so I think... I'm just wondering, Gerard. I'm, I'm, in, I'm spitballing and brainstorming while we're on yeah, here because yeah. I'm, I'm inspired. Um, but you know, there's obviously tons of artists, there's tons of designers, there's tons of motion graphics people on furlough just now. There's, yeah. there's people that want to do good but don't know what to do. Um, you know, I've seen quite. There was a a, a good um, there's a good campaign um, called Not Fur Long. I think I shared on LinkedIn yesterday. Um, yeah. A whole group of advertising creatives from London, kind of you know, trying to use their, their, their free time for good, I suppose. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if, you know, there, 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 it should be the time now to kind of, you know, making a bit more noise. Um, we can obviously help and support that Made Brave wise. And I'm sure Rachel, um, you know, what the platform is as well, because I suppose, you know, the, the more people you get involved, the, you know, the more designs you can create, the more, you know, the more, I suppose the more of an impact you can, yeah. you, you can have there. Um, it also some, sounds something like, you know, you almost feel like, they should be marrying up named designers or other brands to do collabs with because then yeah. you get in front of their audience, you get that kind of that big pool that pulls them all in as well. And again, it you know it, it does great for everyone involved. Um, yeah, we do have, we do have a collab coming up with um, Forty Clothing soon, so mm -hmm. um, so that'll be really good. I mean, the, the guys there have been, you know, as as a brand, you could have just went, oh yeah, let's jump on the bandwagon and kind of you know say we're doing a collab with a you know, a, a non-profit, but the guys have been so into it. They've come along mm -hmm. to the shelters. They've, they've done all that kind of stuff. They've been amazing with us. So um, so we're doing a little collab with them. It's supposed to be released in the summer, but that'll be pulled back probably a little bit now. Um, but yeah, I mean, I mean, for us, it's about probably looking next next year into, you know, doing a lot of kind of bigger collabs because it's, um, that, that's probably, for us, that's how we'd be launching a more fashion based kind of way, um, you know, we, we, we do all our designs and stuff like that, but a lot of the stories get lost. So for us, it, it'd be better to do it with probably bigger brands that can actually support us in different ways. And what, what, what does success look like for you in terms of like, if we, if, if we could fast track it or, you know, or if the creative community right now could help and support and get behind you and all the people listening yeah. and all the people that watch the rewatch of this, what does it look like if we get there faster? What, where, where, is, where is there? Yeah. I, <laughs> For us, it's, 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 
it's a shame, but I mean, I mean, um, homelessness is worldwide. You know, it's a it's a thing that you look at. You know, countries all over the world, and the homelessness is is massive. Um, and I think that you know, as a brand and in fashion, I think that's probably why I chose this. Was um, you know, fashion's a worldwide thing. You know, people. You know. Um, people go out, people buy things. If somebody's wearing something that looks good, people will stop them and ask them. And I think if we can get those stories out there, then um, then that's that's kind of the way we want to go. You know, we we want people to buy them all over the world so that um, you know that, that, that our story gets out there and these people's story gets out there as well as that. We're supporting them financially in some way. Um, then you know we, we try to build uh, or, or we try to. Um, tackle homelessness in a total different way instead of all this throwing money at it you know look at look at that person sitting there and, and don't you know not another you know there's 8,000 people sleeping rough or whatever when I don't know about anyone else but when I hear all these big numbers it kind of kind of switches you off a little bit because you think well you know there's all this happening somebody else must be doing something about it but if you sit Davey down in front of you and say this is Davey and this is you know this is his story um, you know it's it's um, that, that it's powerful, I think, for us as well. One of the big things in being the blank faces, it's it's kind of from day one. Um, you know, speaking to the people that we that we work with, you know, they've always said, you know, we don't want to, we don't want this whole poverty porn thing going on, where you know you put us in front of a camera and we cry down a camera and we do this and do that. They said mm -hmm. our life could change five, ten years down the line, but we'll always be that homeless guy or that homeless woman and. You know, one of them was like, I could win the lottery tomorrow, but I'm going to be the homeless guy that wins the lottery. He was like, I don't want to be that. I want to be, you know, John or whatever that, won the, that wins the lottery. So for us, it's, it's never been about, you know, doing the whole um, the whole poverty porn thing. And as well mm -hmm. as that, I know that I'm on camera just now, but we, as a blank face, we, across the board, we, we, we try to kind of not show who we are as a team. We try to be... You know, a bunch of blank faces. We're all just working towards one goal. Mm -hmm. It's about showing the artwork and the stories of these people that have, that have been through so much in our life that we can hopefully help them. One of, one of the things that you do brilliantly, Jared, is that you've got such a great model because you, you'd mentioned that the the designers who are homeless and your students get a cut, so everybody gets a cut. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, but there's a challenge with that insofar as if you're homeless, how do you open a bank account? How do you manage that? So you did something cool with Monzo, is that right? Yeah, so we worked, We actually worked with the big issue. Um, we shared an office with the big issue in town, so it's pretty handy. Um, so yeah, we started working with the big issue and what the big issue do is they work with Monzo um, on giving homeless people bank accounts so they don't need a fixed abode. The card will get sent to usually our office and then from our office they'll get their card and we can then just put the money into into their account each each month and I think that's I, I don't know anyone any other kind of banks is doing that but I mean Monzo were great when the, you know when Big Issue came to us and said you know this is something you're doing do you want to kind of piggyback off it we were like yeah that'd be amazing because instead of us trying to you know chase down people and say oh there's your 20 quid from last month or whatever or you know whatever it's just more like oh well you know we sold X amount from this shop so just put it into their bank so it's, it's been it's been great that way. Mm. You, you spoke earlier before we came on there, um, some of the challenges you're having in terms of, you know, accessing your own stock. Um, you know, yeah. you, you, you sell stuff out of a, a shop in the design exchange in Buchanan Galleries in Glasgow. Yeah. And yeah. obviously with no access to Buchanan Galleries, there's then no access to your shop um, for yeah. stock. I mean, today's, you know, webinar, we're talking about adapting and, you know, I, I suppose, how, how, how are you adapting and, you know, what challenges are you facing and, and how are you, you know, how, how are you, you know, adapting <clears> to them? Yeah, I would say for us, it's it's you know that that's probably the biggest struggle is the fact that a lot of our stock is in different shops around Glasgow, um, and yeah, and we can't get to it. But we do have, pardon me, we do have uh, stock, and we are working really closely with our manufacturer just now. So what we're doing is if we're getting sales and we're getting in contact with the manufacturer, and they're kind of sending it over in bits and pieces instead of buying bulk just now, which is great. Because mm -hmm. usually they would be like, you know, we need. To, I run up 100 or 200 kind of thing, but um, you know I'm contacting the boy that we we're working with and saying, you know, I've got this, 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 and this, and I can't get to it. And he's like, right, well, I'll just print them up for you and get them sent out to you or whatever, which is great at the moment. But hopefully um, things start to ease up soon and we can kind of get back to normal. But 
it's just about adapting, isn't it? And I think um, mm. one of the big things for us as well is that um, our manufacturer is, you know, can make things. A lot of the a lot of the front uh, line people that we work with in the third sector that work in the in the homeless shelters and stuff. I mean, they're going in there and they're working, you know, 12, 14 hour days, and they're, they're working without, you know, any PPE stuff. You know, they don't have the mm-hmm. face masks, they don't have any of this. And um, and for us, you know, we, we contacted the big lottery or the lottery and and said to them, you know, would there be anybody that we can work with you on this? And you know, they're they're pretty happy to to give us a grant on getting you know PPE stuff done for the third sector um, and not the NHS because I mean, you know, and and. I love the NHS and, and everything they're doing, but you know everything's kind of directed to them at the moment. But you've they've forgot about all the other people that are, you know, still working with vulnerable people and stuff. And I think for us, that's kind of where we want to we want to help as much because um, you know there, there's tons of them working day and night trying to help all these people that's that's actually on the streets or that are using these shelters every day, and uh, you know they're not they're not getting the, the the right equipment that they can. So hopefully we can get something fast tracked at the moment and get the get the, the manufacturer to start getting stuff done for us. So is that, so is that, so one of the things you've done there then, Jared, is you pivoted your business to say, right, well, we can't get stock, we can only get it in jumps and jabs, but we've got these skills, I've got this network, I've got this connection, we can actually do something slightly different for the community yeah. that we work with and get some PPP out, PPE, PPE? PPE <laughs> out there. Yeah. That's what yeah. it was called. Get some <laughs> protective clothing out there for people who are, who are in the front the front line yeah really I think you've been a little humble about the way that you're thinking about your business because you're constantly come against challenge and then you're just hitting it out the park so right actually I can't go that way so I need to go this way I can't go that way so I need to go that way I can't go this way so I need to go that way so you're constantly problem solving how are you feeling in all of this you're always pretty buoyant you're always up for it you're like yeah it's no problem yeah I think I think to be fair it's um you know, it isn't it, it isn't a, a bother. I think you just need to kind of roll with the punches a little bit. Um, you know, it's it's been um, it's been different. It's been difficult at points. I think, and I think probably some point last week, I just had one of those brick wall moments when you go, "Oh my God, this is this is going to kill me." But um, but it's it's you know you just have to get over it. I think, and and you. You know, I'm lucky I've got a roof above my head and then I think of some of the people that, that we do work with and they don't and I think, well, you know, maybe, you know, it's, it's it might be hard today, but at least, you know, I can go to my bed, at least I can do this, at least I can do that. So, um, and I, I know that you're saying I'm being humble, but maybe I'm just, maybe I just am a little bit humble. I think that, you know, it's, 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 it's hard work. It is hard work, um, but it's, it's, you know, I love it. I love, I love the people that we work with. I love the, um, you know, we just, like I said, we just done the, the, the project with Gala Shields and a lot of the students from Gala Shields messaged us and said, you know, is there any way that, you know, you can get material to us and we'll start making PPE equipment for you? And it was just like, it's amazing. It's, it's great how, you know, we're, we're coming together as a, you know, there's, there's, there's people just coming together to try and help each other, which is lovely. Um, you know, you haven't, we haven't saw that probably much in a, in a while, but um, yeah. now it just seems like everyone's actually starting to come together and help each other, which is brilliant. So, so you, you're you're obviously a, a great leader, Gerard, and you know, uh, you know, very inspiring, inspiring me right now. I'm sure I'm spi- you're inspiring everyone else that's listening. Um, and you know, at, at these kind of times, we need people to inspire us, right? We need people to give us the motivation. We need people yeah. to lead, lead the way. I'm, I'm wondering, like, where you look for that? You know, like, who 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 do you see that's leading the way? Who who would you get some inspiration for? If 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 from those people at all? Um, inspiration. Well, closer to home, I'd probably say like. You know, I look at my little boy and he inspires me every day. Like, you know, I know you've got a little boy as well, and or you both have kids, and it's just, you know, it's just like some of the stuff they come up with, and, and for us, it's, um, you know, they, they don't see life, um, they don't see life in the way that we see life. You know, we've been kind of hard into things, but, you know, my little boy's so inquisitive, and he'll just be like, why is that there? Why is this there? And, and, and I love that, and, and for me as well, you know, you ask him what he wants to be, and he's like, what about dinosaur? And I'm like... <laughs> it's so yeah, true, isn't it? Like, yeah. I, was, I was literally sitting in the bath with Finn, he's sitting behind me here, down here, um, the other night, and asking him asking him stuff, and and he was coming out with way better ideas for everything, you know? So yeah. I just started asking him all sorts of stuff about business, you know, how would I keep yeah. my team happy just now? How would I do this? How would I do this? And the ideas were better than mine, and it's so much so that it sparked an idea with Keenan and, and myself here that we're running a webinar, Tuesday, uh, when is that, Keenan? Uh, this Thursday, 
um, with them. So we're bringing the kids on. So mm. myself and Kieran are coming on with our two kids. And we're going to, ah, here he is, here's Finn. Say hi, Finn. Where are you? Hi. Hi. All right, so Finn's going to come on and Lucy, who's Keenan's daughter, is going to come on and they're going to talk about, they're going to give us the advice. Because as you say, it's like sometimes that different way of thinking where they've not been, they've not been jaded or tainted yeah, the way yeah, we yeah, have yeah. or something there's just something something nice in that isn't there yeah yeah um, it's, it's lovely isn't it you just see it from a child's eyes and they just especially like for, for us we, we we lived um we used to live in the west end and we'd walk down by a road and my little boy would just ask all the time like why is that person sitting there Dad? and i was like i don't know like you don't know and it's just like mm-hmm. yeah and it, it was a bit more like oh, well actually let me think about that and and that's kind of you know one of the things that really sparked the whole you know let's actually talk to people and, and, and I think for us mm-hmm. as well one of the big things that you know a lot of people are like oh I'm not going to give people money and stuff in the street but I think one of the big things is see if you just acknowledge someone it, it, you know it, it goes mm. a huge way you just see them you know the, 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 the smile on their face like as if oh my god I'm a human being and somebody's actually acknowledged me now which is lovely um, but yeah I think my, my little boy he, he inspires me I mean he drives me up the wall but um, he inspires me um, and apart from that who else inspires me well, while you're while you're thinking, I just want to give yeah. a wee prod to every, all the uh, people who are watching. If anyone's got questions, we've got the Q and A box below. So if they're if they're rummaging around in your head, they're probably rummaging around in someone else's head. So stick them into the Q and A box um, so that you can ask Gerard um, any of the questions that you have. And just yeah. whilst we're just whilst you're thinking, just whilst we're on that, so I I've got two children as well, and actually we're all on the same path of this. So tomorrow, my little girl um, is she's interviewing me and Medea and Lockie and Harrison so we'd all we'd all it's like a family everybody's got the family show this week so we're also on our 11th as we're getting interviewed as well so I think you're totally right I think seeing what we're the situation we're in at the moment through young people's eyes and children's eyes is just something so powerful and so meaningful because um, yeah. my little girl keeps asking why we're not sharing everything. Why? Why are we not? Why are we not allowed to yeah, share yeah, everything, yeah. mummy? Like yeah. just, this would be a lot better if we could share. Um, so yeah, I think it's just it's just so yeah, lovely yeah. that we're all getting to the same position at that time. Yeah, it's just yeah. That's it. We realise we've all got these little people around that are much more <laughs> useful than we think. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, they're the brains, aren't they? They're the exactly. Ones. Uh-huh. Yeah. Why can't exactly. I go to my granny? It's just like, well, yeah, you just can't. Why? It's yeah. a bug. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, that's great though. It's great. Um, yeah, I think I think probably he he inspires me more than anybody. Um, inspirational wise, I mean, that there's a there are probably a lot of kind of clothing brands out there that I, I, I would inspire us to be. But um, you know, I, I've always said that we're that we are a streetwear brand, so you know, we, we, we're kind of that's where design along streetwear. And you look at a lot of the kind of brands that's come out, um, and you know, some of them have come out and, and you just for me, I don't understand how they've got so big so quickly, but it's amazing how they've done it. Like the mm-hmm. marketing behind the branding and everything, it's just, you know, it just, it's just worked amazing. Um, so I think that's, you know, it, it's great to see, to see um, a lot of kind of up and coming brands and stuff like that coming out as well, which is lovely. Mm. Can I ask, Jenna, oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry, Andrew, can I, I was just gonna ask, how do you juggle that? So, cause you're, you're building a brand yeah. and you're, and you're, you're using the, the, you're using the, the sales from the brand to support the situation and to yeah. change the situation and to challenge the situation. You've got lots of things going on. So how do you build the brand at a, at a pace that in order that enables you, I mean, COVID aside, because you, yeah. you know, there's an opportunity with COVID and you've pivoted and that's it, but COVID aside, how do you build the brand at pace that, that enables you then to really have something meaty to support the homeless people that you work with because you because this, this you need to get this at scale like, yeah rapidly yeah i think for me coming in um to the the whole social enterprise thing a, a couple of years ago um it was you know I've, i'd never dealt with social enterprise. i didn't know what social enterprise was like two and a half years ago um and coming into it you know it, i felt like a lot of kind of social enterprise things was all about you know everyone I spoke to in a social enterprise was all about struggle, struggle, struggle. Oh, we made X amount, we had to give this back to the community and we did this, we did that. And I was like, yeah, but you're not thinking about it like a business. Like as a business, you should be looking to grow your brand first. And then, you know, instead of me 
you know, donating five hundred pound in, in year one or something like that, I could put that five hundred pound back in, double it or treble it or whatever, and then I actually have money that can do some a, a bit more good. Um, and I think for us, it's about. Well, I've I've been trying to, especially when I since I started this, look at things as a business instead of you know instead of like a, a charitable social enterprise, you know, helping the community because you know for me. If the more money we make, the more money, the more stuff we can do with it. I'm not just talking about just throwing it at homelessness, but if we can do things with it, um, and I think for us, you know, doing the, the People Make Mistakes campaign, it was um, it was good. You know, we, we, we did get into a bit of trouble for it, but it was probably a bit of a dig at Glasgow City Council. Um, and, you know, and, and I think some of the new designs we've got coming out are probably a little bit risky um, towards other councils or maybe the same council but um but it's just about you know maybe maybe as as we grow more and more people will actually start talking about it and then that's when you know you know as a small brand glasgow city council can be like yeah it's a couple of posters and stuff but as we grow as a brand and, and we start asking the bigger questions to people that should be getting questioned on it then mm-hmm. hopefully they've got answers for it um, because it's it, it is um, you know there, there is so much more we should be doing but we're not um, we're not so hopefully if we can grow and start asking bigger questions on for people then they will have to answer. Yeah, and I think I think a lot of what you said there is the basics of brand, right? It's what what you know yeah. to grow any brand or to grow a tribe. You've got to have a stance. You've got to stand for something. And and usually, you know, when you stand for something, you know, you're going to get one side of a party that likes it, and one side that doesn't. Yeah. But that means you you stand for something and you mean something. And then you need purpose. You need clear purpose, which you've got. Um, you know, if 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 your then purpose is doing good, it's even stronger. Um, and if you can bolt on, you know, this is this is this 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 actual you know, the t-shirts the things the actual product are as 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 good as you know a diesel t-shirt or whatever else yeah, yeah, yeah. um you know you know the, the mix of all those things together are going to create as you say a great business and that great business is then able to do good because it's you know it's generating profit that can make money rather than just relying on you know inbound you know you're better if you can if you can do that um, and build a sustainable business that that that, that, that everything works with isn't it yeah yeah so we've got a couple of um, questions uh, coming in. Uh, Caitlin Kirk um, says, please ignore this. I've already been discussed. Um, she missed the first 15 minutes, but um, she's interested to know, how do we get homeless people involved? Like, so, you know, how do we get them? Is it through hostels, shelters, food banks? Um, are, there, are there any other practical things, such as the bank account that you've come across as useful? Yeah, I think, well, for us, it's, it's been, you know, we, we do work in, in shelters throughout Glasgow um, and we've just started kind of working in Edinburgh and we've just started working with that. So just, we do a lot, a bit of work with Simon community and with Y people as well. And I think for one of, one of the big things for me is uh, the whole young homeless thing uh, is a killer for me. Like I see young people that are homeless and, you know, it, it really gets to me. Um, so, you know, another thing for us is obviously we share an office with a big issue. So that's fantastic because they've got people coming in all the time. And um, a couple of people on my board also run social enterprises uh, within Scotland who work with homeless people. So we've got a lot of connections there as well. Uh, what we're looking to do is, um, we obviously run our classes within the shelters, but what we're looking to do is we're looking to create a hub where people can come to us as well. Instead of us having you know, a Wednesday and a, a Friday maybe classes, people can drop in whenever they want kind of thing. And we can start creating a bit of a community uh, where people, you know, feel comfortable to come in and tell us their story, and we can work together on something. Because uh, a Wednesday and a Friday, I mean, people people that are homeless is life's chaotic as they are anyway. So to 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 try and say to them, you need to come in every Wednesday, it's kind of a lot of them are like, well, I don't know when I'm sleeping on Wednesday. So mm-hmm. you know, so for us, that that's kind of that's kind of a bit hard. But on the opposite side of that. Like talking to a lot of them, they're like, yeah, it's great to have a structure every Wednesday and every Friday when you come to your classes. So, um, and, and one of the one of the people that's that's really close to me, David Duke, um, from Street Soccer, I said, you know, that was when he started doing stuff when he was homeless. That was a big thing to him, having the structure every single week and building on that. Um, and I think for us, that's that's a big thing. It's having that there that people know that they can come along every Wednesday, every Friday. But once we open up a hub where people can start coming along all the time. It'll be more of a it'll be more of a kind of community space where people can actually just share their, their stories. Mm. 
We've got another brilliant question um, from the floor, Gerard, for you. So if you were in charge of a five million pound pot of money to support early stage organisations and also offer valuable in-kind support, how would you design this? How would you invest the money? A tough one, isn't it? Oh, um, come on! Yeah. I think... How to, how to say this? I think for me it would be about um, taking everyone at face value. You know, no idea is a bad idea. And I think a lot of people get shut down quite early or, or don't get the support they want to because their face doesn't fit. And I think for, for me it would be about just, you know, having having people there that, that, that believe in, in each and everything. Like for me, I had a little idea, like, and I went along and said, oh, this is my idea. And I never thought, you know, at any point that it would get to where it's got to, but it, it has, and, and it was never, it was never, you know, something that I thought, oh, this is going to be huge, but, um, you know, I can, I can see it getting bigger and bigger. So I think that, you know, you need to take everybody's ideas and everybody's stories, um, you know, as a kind of as a baseline and kind of work from there and if people don't have the you know don't have the experience or whatever then then train them how to get it like if you've got five million pounds it's a lot of money you can do a lot with that you know you can put training in places you can do all this kind of stuff but so it's it's a lot easier to to get to i would say as well and i think for for us as well looking at funding and stuff it's um you know, you have to put in an application for one fund, but change it to change the wording or change something else for another fund. And and I think that if we just had one big pot where we could say, right, well, there's the application. And then someone within that organization says, right, well, they're in for that pot or they're in for that pot. So you don't have to, or they're in for both pots. So you don't have to, um, so you don't have to keep, you know, writing up applications every couple of weeks for different grants and stuff like that. And I mean, for us, we, we want to be a self-sustaining business. We are still quite a young business, so um, you know it's 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 easy it's easier to um, it's easier when you're a big business to have a you know someone in writing all your applications for you. But when you're a one-man band, it's you know you're you're doing all these applications, but then you're missing out and maybe like sales online or you're missing out in marketing and etc. So I think it's it'd be easier to. Um, to, to have one big pot where, where people can say, right, well, you know, this is your idea, then let's see how we work on it. Instead of just giving you a, a straight no, because a lot of people have great ideas and when you hear about them and they go, oh yeah, I didn't get support for it. You're like, what? Like, that's that's mad. But um, yeah, that, that's probably what I'd do is I, I, I would give everyone, yeah, I would, yeah, Rachel, thanks. Invest in talent. Yeah, that's exactly what I would do. Um, you know, not everyone's a finished article and if you are the finished article, amazing, but I think when you get to that point when you are the finished article, you should probably be giving back a little bit um, because there's plenty of people out there that need that little bit of giving back. There's a, a, a wee question from Katie Shewan. So she says, I love seeing Scottish clothing brands. I started my own in uni. Um, she's currently on hold due to fourth year taking up too much time. But for inspiring Scottish apparel companies, what advice would you give to them in the current situation as selling products in this market obviously is quite difficult for some? Um, I would say, you know, just if you believe in your product and you believe in what you're doing, then just keep going. I mean, it's, it's um, you know, it's quite easy to, to give up. And, uh, um, you know, that we've had feedback over the past few weeks from people saying, you know, it'd be easier for you to shut down at the moment and then open back up when all this is over. And it's like, yeah, but, you know, we're, we're, we're going to be missing so much. Like, we're trying to help people. And I think even if it's not about helping people, but you want to... Um, you know, have your own brand or look into it in, in, in some way. It's, you know, Scotland's a great place. We, we used to have so much manufacturing in Scotland that's now died away. Um, and I know, like, like Rachel, you you do the fashion foundry, which is an unbelievable thing. You know, and you're helping, you know, young creative people come up with, with, with what they're doing. And I think that, um, yeah, I just think, you know, it, it's tough starting your own, you know, your own thing is is hard and. and you know what, Andrew, can you, mm. you know, it's a, it's a hard thing to do, but if you believe in what you're doing, then I think it's just kind of get the head down and, and go on. Yeah, um, and, and maybe to add on to that, what I would say as well is that, you know, if, 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 if at the core of your fashion brand, right, you've got some sort of great purpose or, or, you know, something that's driving you, some sort of vision, well, this is the time to talk about that vision. This is the yeah. time to activate it, to do things based on whatever that is. Um, you could also use this time as well to, to, 
you know, if you've got extra time, if you're, if, if you're fortunate enough to do so, uh, you know, to be working on designs, you could be then, you know, putting those designs out and you could be like, you could be testing them. You know, you don't have to put them on a t-shirt to test them. You can put them out to, that's the great thing about the world right now is, is, is try them before you put them on a t-shirt, yeah. you know, um, build some sort of campaign where people tell you what they want um, and work on building relationships, you know, like a lot of great collabs, you know, happen in fashion brands. So could you be using this time to reach out to people or reach out to other brands that could help launch your brand when the, when the time comes? Yeah. Yeah, I would definitely say, I mean, for us as well, it's been, you know, um, you know, reaching out to people and getting in contact with people has been massive over the past kind of six, seven weeks. It's just been, um, you know, and there's so much support out there to help people. It's just finding it. And I think, you know, going back to that thing uh, about the five million pot, you know, it's quite hard to find it in different places. But if there was a way that we could, we could all just kind of get together and say, you know, this is happening, then uh, it would be great for, it would be great, especially in creative industries in, in Scotland. You know, it's, it's um, like I said, it'd be great to, to see Scotland boom again within fashion because, it's, it's a kind of shame how a lot of kind of brands have fallen away. Keenan, do you want to pull out a question somewhere? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, <clears throat> sorry, so this one's from uh, from Jack Proctor. Hey, Jack. How you doing? Good to see hey, you here. <laughs> um, so for any uh, or all panelists, is there a purpose-driven adaptation that you've made in response to the pandemic that you'll carry forward into the new normal. So, is there anything I would do that now that I'll, that will carry forward? Is that yeah? Like, is there anything that you're doing now? I mean, because I don't know. I've, I've just you know, for for us at Made Brave, I've heard for you know just countless other businesses who have you know maybe wanted to focus on certain aspects of their business but just haven't had the chance, haven't had the time. Um, they've kind of been forced to prioritize some of these things now. Um, and, you know, for us, we, you know, we, you know, for Made Brave, we've always done like, you know, some remote working and um, yeah. flex time, that sort of thing. But now we're kind of forced to do it and figure it out. Um, you know, so that, that might be something that we carry forward. So, you know, for, for you and your business or for anybody else here, you know, is there something that you've maybe learned during this time that you might carry forward and, you know, once things yeah. are tied down and gone back to normal? Yeah. Uh, yeah, one of the big things would probably be these meetings because like, um, you know, before that, I would, I would, I'd be traveling all day. I'd be going everywhere, but now I'm just like, yeah, I can just jump on the, on my laptop and like speak to people quite easily instead of like, you know, going away down to Gala Shields for the day or whatever. I can be like, yeah, I can just jump on a call. Um, so definitely be pulling that forward when I'm doing that. Um, as well as that, I would probably say, um, I think for us as well, it's just the, the, the team we've got just now, just making sure that everybody knows exactly what's happening all the time. Because for me, I, can, I, I do take a lot on my shoulders and just kind of try to run with everything that I can do. But just now I've been trying to kind of pass everything out to the, the team that I've got behind me and, and they've been doing so much better than I can do. So um, yeah, I need to start remembering that I'm not a jack of all trades and maybe I should actually put my put my uh, skills into what I'm good at so they're just trying to do everything and not doing it as good as what it should be. Yeah that's a, that's a brilliant point. I'm going to be a wee bit controversial just because I can't help myself. I, one of the things I'm definitely going to carry through um, from the pandemic is to work with more people that I actually really like and genuinely love and respect and enjoy the company with. I think sometimes um, I'm a bit like Gerard, I straddle different worlds. So it's a bit of public sector, it's a bit of private sector, it's a bit of investment. I straddle all of those worlds. And sometimes you work with people you think because you have to. Mm. And I think what's what the, the pandemic has thrown up are people's values and the way that they behave has become, re it was always important to me, but it's become more important to me now. Yeah. Um, and so people that you really go, actually, I really respect it. You can do that brilliantly. So I'm going to do that with you. Or people you just go, do you know what, mate? No. Nah. No doing Zoom beers. It's not happening. Yeah, yeah. I think I, I think that I think this whole thing's kind of shown a lot of people kind of who who the good guys are and stuff like that as well. Um, and I think that you know it's it, it's good when when you've got people that are that can actually help that do help, which is great. Um, so yeah, I, I would say that's that's a definite. Rachel working with people that you actually like and that you know that that you can work and help each other. Instead of just being, you know, instead of you just being a, a poster boy or something for 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 something, and, and, and you know, and you're not getting anything back. So um, yeah, I, I definitely think that. I also think um, 
it's going to be a tough one getting out of tracksuit bottoms. It's going to be tough. <laughs> Honestly, it's like just now it's like what what tracksuit bottoms will I pick today? But then when I when I go back to the when I go back out there, people are going to go, why is this guy wearing tracksuit bottoms? He's supposed to be on the fashion label. So yeah, that's going to be a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta put your good tracksuit bottoms on for going out. Oh yeah, that's my tight, my tight, my tight tracksuit bottoms. Yeah, yeah. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Well, we're just but, coming up. We've only got one minute left. Can you believe it? We've only got one minute left. Jared, if you were to give us one parting thought, one bit of advice, hmm. what would it be? Oh, God, I don't know. Um, I think. I think for me, it would be to um, really focus on what you want your your brand to be, or, or what you what your brand aim is. I mean, a lot of people. I mean, we, we spoke about you know blank faces as if about looking at ending homelessness. Um, you know, it, it's it is uh, the the big thing is about ending homelessness. But for us, it's you know it's that it's probably a thing that's never ever going to happen. Um, you know. It, our, our tagline is reverse social decay and that's for us, that's what it's about. It's about changing those perceptions, even if it's one person at a time and, and, and kind of getting that over. But, um, you know, there's a lot, of, a lot of big, big brands out there that say, you know, this is what we're after. But you know that, you know, nothing, nothing, um, that, you know, things like, um, you know, ending homelessness, it, it's a huge thing to ask for. Um, so I think that it's, it's about finding finding your niche and, and kind of really kind of exploiting that. that. That would be what I would say. Fantastic. Cheers. Thank you. Well, thanks everyone for joining us. Uh, as usual, I'm left very inspired, which I was kind of needing today. Uh, I think you. Rachel was needing as well, and I'm sure Keenan too. And um, yeah, I, I, you know, I think to to sum up, I mean, I think what I've taken away from today is that there's many ways to look at business, and it's not always the the straightforward way or the simple way that everyone goes for. Um, you know, I think, I think someone mentioned in the comments um, somewhere about the kind of layers within Gerard's business. I think that's something that I've taken away is that is, is to think about those layers and think about how you can use them for good. Um, and I also believe that, yeah, it just now shows up the good guys um, and the not so good guys as well. And I think, you know, um, if you're trying to figure out what to do in your business next, well, maybe start by trying to do something good for someone. And, you know, what, what I've seen, what we've found is that by doing good for someone, something good comes back to you. And, and, and if we can all be doing that and looking after each other that, rather than just looking after ourselves, then perhaps, you know, we can leave the world in a better place than when, when all this began, um, which would be nice to see as well. Um, so if you've not done so, make sure and go and check out all of Gerard's uh, social channels. Gerard, what are they? Do you want to let everyone know? Yeah, so find on... You? on um... On Instagram and Twitter, we're just the underscore blank faces. And on Facebook, we're the blank faces CIC. Um, yeah, that's that's our three channels. We, we, we try to do as much as we can on them. Um, again, it's one of those things that when you say, oh, I'm going to try and do everything, but um, sometimes some stuff falls down. But yeah, so social um, socials are, um, yeah, the blank faces the, blank the same. Face. The, the same for Instagram and uh, Facebook is the blank faces CIC community interest company. Smashing. So obviously, as we mentioned, we'll be record this has been recorded, so we'll be sharing it. So also, if you give people a, a share that would be interested in Gerard's story, um, we'll be back next Tuesday at five o'clock. Uh, I don't think we have a guest confirmed yet. Do we have Rachel? Oh, maybe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's going to be a big reveal. A big reveal, is that right? Okay. You can reveal it to me after this call. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, thanks for thanks for coming along. Um, if you you know follow Creative Entrepreneurs Club on LinkedIn um, or across you know, Facebook or Twitter, and likewise with Made Brave or, or any of our four personal channels on LinkedIn, and we'll keep you up to date on what's what's happening next. Thanks a lot, and thanks for taking the time out the evening. Take Thank care. You See you next week. Thanks, thanks everyone. Later. Bye. See you Bye. next week. Bye. 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 Try to think is that is there a way is there is there a way to end a meeting where just where we stay in at the end? There should be if everybody else starts to leave. Is there, but we're still recording. <laughs> we'll end it now and then.
unless anyone knows that magic button that's listening. There must be a way. There must be a way. Come on, Zoom. <laughs> Zoom experts that are still in here. There's only one. There's one left. That's it. One left. Okay. And you need to stop recording. That's oh, us. Yeah. yeah, that's us. Yeah. So